has been a sequel to the Gilman British News issue which drew attention to the appalling shortage of iron lungs in this country. We pointed out that the hospitals of Britain had fewer than 30 iron lungs, the means of saving life in a case of infantile paralysis. Lord Nuffield saw a film of the iron lung and he decided to supply every hospital in the British Empire at a cost to himself of half a million pounds. Lord Nuffield will manufacture them at his own works and this brings the charitable gifts of the great philanthropist up to a total of 12 million pounds. Despite his channel crossing in a gale, Mr. Chamberlain was looking happy and unruffled when he arrived in Paris for conversations with the French government under Monsieur de Lallier. With Lord Halifax, the foreign secretary, they drove to the Elysee Palace. In the meanwhile, Mrs. Chamberlain made a tour of the city, one of her visits being to a children's nursing home. This visit to Paris must surely be one more step in bringing Britain and France to closer understanding. nation's lifeblood flows through the channels of the sea. If her ports are blockaded, the strongest must eventually bow to the invader. We have shown how France is protected by her natural mountain ranges and her man-made Maginot line, but these steel guardians of her shores must be competent in wartime to ensure food and other supplies from abroad. These are her dreadnoughts, the floating fortresses that will keep open her lanes of commerce. Two quadruple gun turrets for us. Dunkirk is the only battle cruiser in the world so armed. How does France protect her shipping? How does she keep open her ports and preserve communication with her colonies? Algeria, Senegal, Madagascar. Watch her fleet at exercises. Atlantic and Mediterranean squadrons march out to sea. The Navy includes 30 submarines of 92 meters and 40 smaller. They dive in 40 seconds. They could travel from Havre to New York and back and back again without taking on fresh supplies. Their wonder ship is the Surku, armed with torpedo tubes and twin surface guns, the only submarine cruiser in the world that carries an aeroplane. Watch the spectacular action of the giant underwater craft going into attack with her torpedoes. <laughs> comes to the surface, and as the waters recede from her shiny back, she changes from submarine to surface fighter. <laughs> Aircraft carrier Bairn, a floating aerodrome that acts as mothership to part of the Navy's air arm. From the water, a seaplane squadron takes off in formation. And above the coastline, the air arm plays its part, the eye of the fleet in the sky. Fifteen years ago, the French Navy was reorganized and reconstructed. France does not need so great a navy as Great Britain, but her 1938 program lays down more battleships. More aircraft carriers, more cruisers and torpedo boats. In 
In the open sea, these men of war press on the pace. Destroyers crash through the water at a speed of 45 knots. The gray steel fleet of France is going into action. <laughs> Action stations. Dignified and terrible, those gun turrets are swinging into the attack. big guns, she matches a four-barrel anti-aircraft gun. Her crews are working at full pressure, and the ocean echoes to the mighty voice of battle. is ready to play her part as the ally of Great Britain. German British news will show in later issues more exclusive pictures of French defense. More secrets will be revealed by government permission. Watch for the next issue, the defense of France. This is the Gaumont British News, presenting the world to the world. At a time of national need, French industry has been threatened with the crippling effects of a general strike. It was a protest against the government's decree laws extending the 40-hour week, and the strike called for one day was expected to paralyze the working of the whole of France. Monsieur de Ladier took immediate action. Republican guards were kept at their posts. Native troops were on guard in Marseille. Troops were called upon to guard the public services in other cities. The stern measures adopted had their effect. Monsieur de Ladier was able to announce that he was satisfied. The strike was broken. In Paris, it was called a complete fiasco. The capital returned to normal working once again. <laughs> We can hardly claim that this is new. The Eaton Wall game provides a picture that crops up once a year. They play it every St. Andrew's Day. But they haven't scored a goal for years and years. So we keep on filming it in the hope that one year they might. The goal at one end is a door, at the other a tree. 
And this year, Opperton's won by three shies to none. But the chief interest in the game is not the shying. It's the herd of high-class young men getting very dirty in the mud and pushing each other about without very much else happening. And it is with this thought in our minds that we say farewell to Sunny Eden. Conversation overheard at the Knightsbury's exhibition of fur-bearing animals. To think that my lovely fur coat came from a little skunk. Really, I didn't even know you were married. Now let's see where the fur coats go to. Even at 25,000 pounds a time, you must admit they look worth it.